for me, it's vital to have guys I can lean on that have coached a little longer than I have, that have a better perspective that I can go to for some, for some answers. And they're probably not going to be easy answers, but they're going to help me understand how I can work through it. They've seen it before. There's a big picture here. And the same for the players. This isn't about pulling yourself up by the bootstraps all the time. You know, the guys will come in my office and they'll be like, coach, like, I just don't know what to do here. And I've done it long enough, you know, and I can see, I have perspective, I can see what's going on. And they're probably not the first guy to come in my office and tell me that problem. There's someone you can go to for help and guidance, and they will help you see what the next step should be. Now, earlier in these sessions, I said, and I'll repeat it again, that I begged of us never to get, forget Rule 5, saying that Rule 5 would get us safely through almost any darkness in our spiritual lives. Now I'm going to complete that sentence. I beg of us never to forget Rules 5 and 13 together. These two rules together will get us safely through any darkness we may ever experience in the spiritual life. That is, Rule 5, don't make changes to anything in your spiritual life when you know you're in spiritual desolation. And rule 13, when you find burdens on your heart in your spiritual life, temptations, confusion, discouragement, find a wise and competent spiritual person and speak about it. Now Ignatius says two things in this text. First, what is it that he wants us to speak about? Burdens. So fears, anxieties, uh, troubling thoughts. If I may say this very reverently, and I want to speak with great reverence because I know that Rule 13 can touch very deep places in our hearts. We feel God's love approach. Something in our heart wants to respond, but there it is. There's the thing that makes us hold back. The burden, the fear, the trouble. And we've never talked about it. The burden has just been there. Maybe it's from years ago in our lives. Maybe it's something that's happening in our lives now. But there's the burden. And the enemy's whole urging is you can't talk about that. You can't say anything about that. Because as long, and he knows, as long as you don't say anything about it, the burden will go on, which is exactly what the enemy hopes. So Ignatius' response to this is no, don't be alone with it. Find a wise and competent spiritual person and speak about it. Now you can see Ignatius is very clear on this. He's not just saying find anybody, anybody at all and speak about this. You need a person who is experienced, knowledgeable, and mature in the spiritual life so that when you speak about it, this person is going to understand you well and be able to help you. So who might that person be? It might be a priest, another spiritual director, a religious, a layman or laywoman who has training and formation and knowledge and is wise and mature in the spiritual life. Find a wise and competent spiritual person and speak about this. And then a very beautiful thing happens. Captives are set free. I would say that probably the happiest thing in the 40 years of my priesthood has, has been in different settings to be the space in which a person has been able to put into words a burden that he or she has been carrying sometimes at great length. You see before your eyes, captive set free. Now, I want to put into words the ways that we may hear the enemies push to keep it secret, not to talk about it, so that the burden can go on. And let's, uh, let's just put them into words. Here is a wise and competent spiritual person. I know that I could speak with him or with her, but he, she is so busy. Well, look, if it's a priest, for example, and it's Good Friday, probably he is too busy. But don't ever take upon yourself the responsibility for the management of that person's time. You can always ask. And people are honored to be asked. Don't be afraid to ask. If he or she is really too busy, he or she will tell you. Here is a burden on my heart. Here is a wise and competent person with whom I know I could speak, but I'm too busy. All right, if there's a, a week of pressure and so on, I may grant that. But if three months have gone by and six and you're still too busy, 
You might want to think in terms of Rule 13. There's an enemy who doesn't want you to speak, who doesn't want you to find freedom. What more valuable than this can we do with our time? If I talk about this, here's the wise and competent spiritual person. If I talk about this, he or she will, will laugh at me. Absolutely not. I can't say this strong enough. If he or she is the wise and competent spiritual person that Ignatius has in mind, he or she will respect you all the more because they will know the courage that this took. If I talk about this, he, she will never be able to understand me. A long tradition in the church's history says exactly the opposite. Again, if this is the wise and competent spiritual person Ignatius has in mind, that person will be able to understand you, understand far more than you yourself do about your own situation. If I talk about this with him or with her, he, she will be kind to me, but he, she will never quite respect me again in the same way. Exactly the opposite is true. If it, again, if it is the wise and competent spiritual person that Ignatius has in mind, he or she will grow in respect because he and she will know the courage this took and love the desire in you to grow in freedom. And then maybe just more generically, what's the point of talking about this? There's nothing anyone can say that can make any difference. Again, absolutely not. And 2,000 years of the church's tradition and the experience of so many says exactly the opposite. The enemy will try to speak to you that way so that you won't speak so that the burden can go on. Break the spiritual silence with the right, wise, and competent spiritual person and you will love what will happen. All right, with whom might we speak? Well, classically in the church's tradition, we have spiritual directors. If you can find a good spiritual director, that is absolutely wonderful. Confession. Confession is available to everyone. It's probably uh, true to say that it's underused right now. Find a good and wise confessor who maybe won't have time to say an awful lot, but those few words, sometimes few sentences that he says can make all the difference. Let regular confession be a part of your life and you won't be alone with these things. Annual retreats. And retreats are lovely as a space for renewal, but they also give you the opportunity to speak to someone about the burdens that may be in your hearts. On a different level, that's not spiritual direction, but very helpful spiritual friends. I remember uh, a woman telling me that she and a group of her friends, they were young mothers, would get together on Saturday mornings every week just to be together for brunch. But at a certain point, they all knew they were going to talk about spiritual issues, enormously strengthening. One time when I was in spiritual desolation, I had dinner with a priest friend, and I was just like friends do, just sharing what was going on. He said one sentence, not trying to be a director, just a friend. It sounds like you're in desolation. That broke the whole thing. Spiritual friends, you can speak by video chat, on the phone, in person. It can be enormously helpful. The parish and groups that you can join where we can be accompanied spiritually in families, husbands and wives for each other, the family together as a unit. There are so many ways to be accompanied. Find one and several, more than one of these ways to be accompanied, break the spiritual silence, and wonderful things will happen. Again, you'll move toward freedom. Thank you.